Okay, it's now the top of the hour, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's webinar. Today we're going to be talking about common myths about web marketing for lawyers and also providing some helpful facts and tips. So thank you for taking the time to join us today. Just a few housekeeping matters before we get started. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be sent to you via email shortly afterwards, so there's no need to take notes unless you'd like to do so. And in the event that you're having any issues with the audio or visual components, please just go ahead and use the raised hand feature in the GoToWebinar control panel, or you can type me a message and we'll try to get that resolved for you as quickly as possible. So my name is Drew Mancini and I'm the Digital Marketing Manager here at Lawlytics. I have a background as a marketing consultant for solos and small law firms in digital marketing practices as well as branding. And now I continue to enjoy helping to make marketing more accessible and enjoyable for attorneys by really just working to create those resources that help demystify successful marketing practices. So there seems to be no shortage of too good to be true website marketing solutions for attorneys to either buy or try. And these solutions are often costly or time consuming. They might not work. And this could leave you feeling confused and frustrated with your legal marketing overall. And as a busy attorney juggling your responsibilities as a business owner with your responsibility to your clients, it's important to know what digital marketing practices are effective and what you should just pass on. However, succeeding online is actually a lot more simple than you might think, and effective search engine optimization or SEO strategy is really easy to understand and implement for your firm's website. So, Today we're gonna to be discussing um, myth versus fact when it comes to web marketing for lawyers, including um, common marketing myths that are sold to attorneys by marketing agencies, what you really need to know about Google's page ranking factors, and then the cheapest, most effective SEO strategy for law firm websites. So let's start first with why it's even important to know what is myth versus fact when you're approaching your digital marketing strategy. And this is important because uninformed attorneys may act out of the belief of something that is either unhelpful or maybe even hurtful to their digital marketing. And if this happens, this could result in thousands of dollars lost or a website that might be unusable because it might have been blacklisted by Google or flagged as unfriendly to Google's users. It's also helpful to know myth versus fact because knowing what's going to work for growing your visibility on Google versus what isn't is going to help you to avoid unrealistic expe expectations so that you're ultimately able to reduce your frustration or any sort of disappointment, any more money wasted, and also just to give you a better overall perspective on what to expect in your digital marketing journey from here to um, the whole journey of your business. And then lastly, SEO is really, really easy to understand and that anyone that is telling you otherwise is probably just trying to sell you something. So let's start with the myths. The first myth we're gonna talk about is that you can buy SEO as if it were a product. So SEO, if you're not already aware, it stands for search engine optimization. And SEO is not a product that can be bought or sold, but it's rather going to be an outcome. And it's an outcome of five things. It's an outcome of the written pages, or the, sorry, the written content on your pages, the user experience for your web visitors, the technical and structural details of how your website was built, whether your website is compliant with Google's guidelines, and then also the authority of your website compared to the websites of your local competitors. So how you know if you've actually achieved success with SEO is if your website is working to predictably attract and convert new clients using Google's or other search engines, free search engine traffic. Meaning there isn't going to be a quick fix or a product that you can buy that's going to give you the results you're looking for because when you're the most successful with, it, with SEO, it's actually going to be reflected at your most affordable and sustainable price point because you're benefiting from free search engine traffic. And we'll be talking about the best SEO strategy for your law firm's website later on in this presentation. The next myth I will be discussing is keyword stuffing. So keyword stuffing is a super outdated tactic 
that was used as a way to try to trick Google into using your website um, in more search results back in the earlier days of Google. Um, this can be similar to um, link building, which is the next myth we'll be talking about, because this tactic is now totally ineffective due to the more modern sophistication of Google. This used to be a trick, they've caught on to it many years ago, so if this is something that is ever brought up to you by a marketing agency, or if this is still even a service that they sell, which is definitely still happening, that should be a huge red flag for you. The practice of keyword stuffing involves using relevant keywords multiple times throughout a page or an entire website in order to, again, try to trick Google into thinking that that site is going to be relevant in more search results. And marketing agencies will still try to sell, sell you this tactic and even charge you for back-end keyword stuffing, which in theory would incorporate this tactic in the back-end of your website and influence Google's indexing of your website. However, that doesn't work and they're trying to sell you something that is outdated and ineffective. And on top of all of that, all of these keywords that you're putting all throughout your website or in entire pages on your website are going to sound unnatural to web visitors if your web pages read just like you're trying to use as many keywords as possible. So even if it is a little bit more subtle in the way that they're trying to stuff all these keywords, if they are trying to get information from a page on your website and it's just all of these buzzwords, it's going to look odd, it's going to feel odd, it's going to read odd, and that could result in them bouncing from your website. So it's it's not good all the way around. So um, the way Google works now is that instead of relying on keywords to match the user with the best search results, Google's instead going to use the intent of the searcher in combination with the meaning of the page's content, um, maybe also the user's location, um, and, and things like that uh, to more organically match them with a search result that makes sense for them. Um, the next myth and the last myth we will mention is link building. So this is also similar to keyword stuffing, as I mentioned, in that it is super common yet severely outdated and it's used by marketing agencies and it involves linking your website to other clients websites like their other client clients websites so back in the earlier days of uh, the world wide web this worked as a cheat for websites to help build their authority to google and make it seem like it was a more popular website than it was because the practice in theory is that if you list your website on other people's websites, it'll look like they are referencing your site as a resource. But um, the reality is that Google is, again, a lot more sophisticated now, and it's going to realize that those pages aren't using your website or your links in an organically resourced way. It's gonna look exactly how it is to Google and it's gonna work against you or not at all in your favor. So um, yeah, like now in 2023, Google has far surpassed those cheats and knows all of the tricks that it is involved that is involved in all of this. And when it comes down to it, there's just no quick way to improve your website's reputation with link building. But if you were able to have your website listed as an actual true and legitimate source on another website's article or blog post, that can be genuinely helpful to your website. So for example, if your law firm blog is very active and you give regular updates on legal um, issues um, from your perspective, for example, this could be cited elsewhere on another website in a blog or article. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way that um, marketing agencies try to go about it in a way that is trying to, again, trick Google. The moral of the story is you can't trick Google. You have to play by their rules if you want to be visible on their search engine. And then I want to talk about this next question um, that we hear a lot. Um, should I aim for my firm to rank number one on Google? And while Google is important, your ranking is 
unlikely to be the sole metric that's going to define your law firm's ability to reach your potential clients online. Google's objective is to match users with the best and most relevant search results based on their search query. They're doing this by indexing the written content on the website pages on your site and producing results that are both relevant and local to that user. So those top Google rankings don't necessarily translate to traffic and traffic isn't always equivalent to qualified potential clients. R rather, what you need to be focusing on is content marketing and content marketing is what brings potential clients to your website, but then also helps them, helps transform them into new business for your law firm. In addition, Google's confidence in your website's written content will influence the ranking that it gives your web pages in those relevant and local search results. Because the system for producing search results is multi-tiered, there really isn't any way for a website to be at the quote unquote top of Google because it doesn't necessarily exist without paying absolute top dollar for ad space for a certain keyword or a certain phrase. And in the next part of the webinar, we'll be talking more in depth about Google's ranking factors um, so that you can uh, get an idea for this a little bit better. So Google's ranking factors. To understand them, let's first think about what Google wants from us. Google wants to give its users the best information based on their search query, and it relies on domain experts to do this. It's relying on you all um, and the, the business owners, the website owners. So Google is the most satisfied with useful and relevant information that is bolstered by a good web user experience. And just as a note about user experience, Google and potential new clients only care about the design of your website insofar as it facilitates the consumption of your content. So that first ranking factor is going to be high quality written content, which we'll be getting into in the next upcoming slides. And then the second part is going to be the good user experience. This is basically determined by how your site is organized and if it's easy to navigate. Um, if your content is readable, and if your website has clear and effective conversion paths. Again, your website's design should be helping the web visitor get to the information that they were looking for when they approached Google with their search query in the first place. So if a marketing agency is approaching you with things like pop-ups or lots of videos, or any sort of design element that just kind of seems like over the top, it's fancy, it's a bound whistle, um, this is going to be, this has the potential of just getting in the web visitor's way of getting the information that they actually need on that page. And then if that happens, it's going to be doing a lot more harm than good. And it's really pretty likely that any sort of the above and beyond design feature is just going to end up having some sort of opposite effect, which will just not be worth your money and your time. Next is your website structure. Um, you're doing great if your website is mobile friendly, secure, and fast loading. Um, Google wants all of those three things and you're already in a step in the right direction if you can deliver on all of those three things. So first there's mobile friendliness and it's important to keep in mind that this goes beyond just your website loading quickly in mobile. It also needs to think about, or sorry, you need to think about also how it looks when that potential client is on their mobile device and how they might be expecting your website to look when they're on their mobile device. So it's more likely than not that they will be accessing your site on something like a phone or a tablet. So you need to make sure that your website just actually has the infrastructure in place that will help your desktop website seamlessly adapt to whatever device they're accessing your website through. And of course, your website structure needs to be secure. That's the other element of this, meaning that potential clients and um, also your current clients can trust leaving any sort of sensitive information, like maybe their intake information, or if you offer online payments, if they feel um, safe leaving their banking information. That is all gonna help with the full circle of client interaction with your website from that first exposure, on a fast loading site to um, that end 
where they maybe are submitting their last payment. So it kind of needs to support their entire journey with you. And the fourth ranking factor deals with compliance. And that just means that you can't break any of Google's rules in their webmaster guidelines. Again, we have to play by Google's rules or else we are really not gonna get very far. In the more obvious sense, breaking a Google Webmaster Guideline could look like practices that attempt to trick Google into ranking it higher in search results. For example, those SEO myths we discussed, like keyword stuffing. Um, there's also um, other tricks like cloaking or any sort of link scheme or scraping content from other sites. Those are all just no-nos. But in the less obvious sense, the practice of using thin content on your pages could also put you in violation with Google's webmaster guidelines. And what thin content is, is it is um, content on your page that doesn't actually work to answer the potential client's question that they had on Google, and it doesn't work to um, support that question or give any sort of informative um, information on that page. Uh, that's what can be considered thin content. And it's violating Google's guidelines because it just lacks value. And Google wants to make sure that it's delivering value to its users. And finally, the last factor is authority. And this is the relative trust attributed by Google to your website compared to websites that are competing for those same exact searches. And this is determined by the usefulness of your content and the ease to which your content can be utilized. And now let's talk about the cheapest, most effective SEO strategy, which is gonna be high quality website content. Google has repeatedly stated that high quality content is likely the most essential ranking factor in search results. And it also is the single biggest driver of visitors and leads to your website. As I mentioned previously, to succeed with SEO means that your law firm's website predictably attracts, engages, and converts new clients from using just free search engine traffic. Google is depending primarily on the actual text to predict if a website page will provide a good answer to a user's search query. So again, it's relying on words and not really those fancy bells and whistles or um, bunches of videos and images, things like that. So what actually makes written content the cheapest and most effective SEO strategy? For one, high quality written content can be as affordable as free for you. So if you have the time to put in to writing high quality content for your website that is locally optimized and targets your ideal client online, then you will likely achieve at least some level of success with search engines. Second, unlike paid advertisements or social media or some other sort of marketing tactic, your website content can be a one and done deal. Unless there's major changes to the law or um, any sort of practice area that you specialize in, there's probably not gonna be a lot of reason to update your practice area content on your website, which really gives the content the best return out of investment out of um, all the other marketing strategies that are available to you. And then next, written content is going to be your most effective SEO strategy. As I've mentioned, Google depends primarily on text to predict if a website page is gonna provide a good answer to a search query. This is going to outrank your participation in paid advertisements or any sort of other paid marketing effort that is trying to work to get your traffic um, boosted on search. Not only does it match with what Google is just genuinely intended for, but you're also going to more likely get a more targeted audience when you're producing good content. And while an expensive paid ad might get your phones ringing, it might get um, maybe a spike in traffic, it's probably not going to be bringing in um, a high volume of really good targeted leads that are going to help lead to conversions. Instead, traffic that you're attracting from that more localized and high quality content is going to yield a pool of potential clients that admittedly might be smaller, but it's going to be more likely to convert due to their intent to hire you when they found your website in the first place. 
And while we are on the subject of high quality content for your primary SEO strategy, I think it's also worth, also worth talking about GEO, which is the practice of optimizing your website's written content to play nicely with AI powered generative search. For example, Google's search generative experience, also known as Google SGE. And to fully understand GEO, I think it's good to see it in the context of just the progression of how digital content interacts with search technologies, especially with the integration of AI. So what we've been talking about up to this point is search engine optimization or SEO. SEO, again, is the practice of optimizing websites to rank higher in search engine results pages and attract more organic traffic. Traditional SEO focus on, focuses on understanding search engine algorithms and optimizing content to, um, to behave accordingly. So that's using keywords, meta tags, backlinks, and other strategies. The objective of SEO is understood to be to increase the website's visibility and user traffic by aligning content with what search engines deem valuable. Again, following those rules, following those guidelines, and producing things that are high quality. This is what is dominant now and what was dominant in the early ages or stages of the internet and web search engines, and it just continues to be fundamental. And then we have search generative experience or SGE, as I mentioned. SGE is a newer introduction by Google and it works to enhance the search experience of the user by incorporating generative AI technologies to provide more relevant and contextual or comprehensive responses to search queries. So SGE involves AI to directly generate answers or provide summaries and give the user um, a more holistic view of their answer in kind of more of like a conversational interaction. You're probably familiar with how this is presented on Google. So for example, now you can go in, um, search something on Google, and um, it's likely that you'll see as your top result that there is the generative AI experience, and it says that it's in testing. Um, and then, so when you search it, that's going to be what's popping up first um, above your paid ads and above your regular search results. And so that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Google SGE. So that all of that information that's at the very top of your Google search results nowadays, that is all um, search results that have been generated using AI. And then so because of the introduction of SE, SGE, we have the newest member of the family, which is generative engine optimization, that's GEO. GEO is the adaptation of content optimization strategies to help us align with the capabilities and the expectations of those AI-driven search engines. So GEO combines traditional SEO techniques with an understanding of how generative AI models um, both process and prioritize their content. And its ultimate goal is to ensure that content is discovered, it's actively interpreted, and favorably ranked by AI search engines. So when we saw the shift from SEO to SGE, we really just saw a shift from purely algor algorithmic <laughs> search engine optimization towards enhancing the search experience with AI, focusing on user interaction and satisfaction. And then from that second part, SGE to GEO, we acknowledge the influence of AI on search technologies and it necessitated a new approach to content optimization that goes beyond just the simple traditional SEO to include AI specific considerations. So again, when we're thinking about and strategizing about SEO versus GEO. One thing about GEO is that the emergence of generative engines is a pretty significant evolution in the field of search engines. And unlike the traditional engines, which primarily provide a list of relevant websites to us, um, generative engines go a step further by generating those multimodal responses. Again, the ones that you would see maybe at the top of your search engine results now. 
um, synthesize with multiple resources. They're maybe in that conversational formatting. They provide um, ways to explore your topic further, things like that. So instead of just a list of websites, it's just a little bit more holistic. Again, kind of like what we were talking about in our previous slide, generative search is eliminating your need to just click on a web page that Google is suggesting to you. And instead, it's just pulling from everything that it can possibly pull from to deliver the answer to you right there on a platter and give the user um, the answer that they're looking for without even needing to explore a web page or do any more clicking or leave Google whatsoever. So for attorneys, all you need to understand at this point and for your purposes is that GEO is a practice of how you optimize your written content so that it can be included in those generative search results. So if Google's pulling from everything, you want to make sure that you are something of the everything, right? And for GEO's purposes, this is going to include things like um, optimize, optimizing your content to be easily summarized by AI, um, as well as understood by AI and prioritized by, by AI. And then lastly, let's discuss what factors determine if content is high quality. And this is going to be important to know your or know where your primary digital marketing strategy is focused on SEO, GEO, maybe a combination of the two, which is more of a likelihood for your purposes um, as an attorney and business owner. And so first, the content should be providing original information, reporting, research, or analysis. It should also provide a, a substantial, complete, or comprehensive description of the topic that the um, user was seeking, as well as insightful analysis that goes beyond just the obvious. So that's kind of more of the SEO requirement of what makes content high quality. For GEO specifically, we've seen a preference for the use of statistics, for example, in your content to help you gain visibility in generative search results. Next, you will need to consider a descriptive page title and subtitles that help summarize the content um, without being clickbaity. So it's also helpful for your purposes to consider where and how your titles and subtitles can be localized so that you can make sure that you're utilizing any available opportunity to target your local audience with your written content. And last, it's always helpful to ask yourself if you genuinely would recommend that page of content on your website to a friend or a colleague, or if you would expect to see that content referenced by a printed source. In addition, Google provides quality rating guidelines called EEAT, which stands for Experience, Expertise, Authority, and Trust. And these are just kind of um, not really necessarily a need to know, but it is a little bit more information to truly understand what Google is expecting of your website. And for law firm websites specifically, these are categorized by Google as YMYL websites. The YMYL stands for your money or your life. And these pages are called that and they're categorized as that because they're, um, they're sorry, they have a potential effect on the happiness, health, or well being of search user who may find them. So these are pages with legal information or financial information, medical information, things like that. Those are all going to fall under YMYL. And so as a result, those pages require a high amount of EEAT, and Google is actually going to hold these pages to a higher standard. So again, just a little bit more information and context for when you're creating your content and you, for you to a little bit better understand um, to what quality you are really um, looking for when you're creating your content. So, um, and back to the EEAT, um, you also want to understand what a successful and high quality website is, um, what, what it looks like and what it's doing. And for one, it's going to sufficiently answer the potential client's question. 
meaning the page expands on any answer beyond the bare minimum with satisfactory detail and information. It's successfully educating potential clients about the questions they have regarding their legal matter. And it also just doesn't function solely as a method of advertisement, but also provides, again, valuable information. And then two, you wanna offer a positive user experience. The potential client needs to feel like their needs have been met and that the content was easy to find, easy to read and understand, and that the page had enough substance to um, allow them to trust your expertise and find your law firm credible. And as such, they might also be encouraged to um, explore your website further, um, look into your attorney profiles, your testimonials, your case summaries, things like that, so that they are kind of going along their customer journey and that you can make that conversion. And finally, it should achieve its purpose. The web page or your website, but specifically a web page, should successfully convert visitors to new clients. With sufficient answers to their most immediate questions, visitors should be impressed enough and ready to reach out to your law firm. So while it's also always important to think about your website as this whole entity, you want to still drill down into every individual page and make sure that it is fulfilling its purpose and that it has high quality value. So in conclusion, your, web, your firm's website is the foundation of your digital marketing strategy and a high quality modern website is gonna be the first step to targeting your local ideal client more efficiently and affordably. What we do is streamline the technical and digital marketing aspects of, your mar of managing your firm's website and our platform is super simple to use and put, puts lawyers in control of their digital marketing. So what I'm gonna do in this next part is just show you around just a bit. I wanna show you specifically our um, SEO snapshot. And I also wanna show you around creating a new page of content using our content library, because not only is our content in the library optimized for SEO, but it all also is um, optimized for generative search engines. Okay, so this is our initial landing spot. So this is what is our member dashboard. So if you have a website with us, this is more or less your landing spot to um, add pages to your website, um, look up how your website is performing, add a new blog post, make any changes, anything you need to do, this is where you would go if you had a website with us. And as I just mentioned, the first thing I want to show you is this SEO snapshot. So we're going to just go on that shortcut and learn more. And what this really does is gives you an idea of all the ways that your website has been optimized for you for search on our end. But then what I also love about this snapshot is that as I go through the categories of all the ways my website has been optimized, I can see my completed optimizations, but then I also have option to look at what's um, what are some optional optimizations so that maybe if I wanted to take my website um, a step further, I had some extra time on my hands, I can go through all of these categories and figure out exactly what I could be doing that is optional on my end and figure out how I can maximize my law firm website and really get the best value out of this website. Um, so again, you can see how your uh, website has been optimized across accessibility, content, search engine visibility, the security of your website, as well as user experience and page speed. So there's all these different categories. It's just a great way to see exactly what goes in to making your website visible on Google and searchable by your potential clients. And um, again, what we're all about is making SEO super transparent and super easy and super straightforward. And we don't want to sell you any gimmicks. We don't have any gimmicks to sell. So this is why we put everything in one little dashboard for you so that it's super easy and comprehensive for you to review for yourself. The next thing I'll do, I'm going to take you into a website and show you the back end just to give you an idea of what that could look like. So let's go back to sites. 
Um, if you had multiple websites with us, these is, this is where they would all be nested, and then you can click into one website, make any changes you need to, click into whichever website from there, and on and on and on. So this is an example of what the back end of one of my websites looks like. Basically, on the right side, I have an easy way to edit all of the actual written content on my pages, add images, videos, um, widgets, things like that. And then on my left, those are all of the pages that are in the navigation bar of my website. So um, for example, I have a home tab and about our firm and estate planning, um, one of my practice areas, criminal defense. Um, and as I click through, I'm brought into what that page looks like on the back end. So say I wanted to make a little change to my business law page, all I would need to do is click on that page. I can make my change, change, change. And then let's take a look uh, at what that would look like once I just publish that page. I'm gonna go to the front end. And then as you can see, change, 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 it's already live on the front end of my website. So it's really easy to use and to navigate in the back end. So as you can see, everything that was on the left um, kind of like nested vertically. These are all of my pages um, in my navigation menu horizontally. And then another thing about this is that um, say you wanted to rearrange a page, you're not happy with business law above civil appeals, all you would need to do is drag and drop. And then once I, again, visit the front end of my website, that is um, rearranged for me. Where did I put it? It would be rearranged wherever I remember I put it. But, um, well, I don't know. But my point is, is that uh, the pages are all drag and droppable. Um, there's no coding on your end or anything complicated like that. Um, that's just a feature that um, tends to be a really popular one with our attorneys because, um, you know, we're attorneys, we're not uh, coders, we're not website designers. Um, and then the last thing I'll show you why I still have you is creating a new page with our content library. So again, these pages are optimized for um, search engine performance, not only in the traditional SEO sense, but also in the generative engine optimization, um, generative AI search sense. So um, what this content library is, is a library of over 300 practice area topic cards across 20 practice areas so that when our members come in, maybe they're creating a brand new website or maybe they've been with us a while, they're starting a new practice area. They don't even have to look at that blank page and start from scratch when it comes to their practice area content. They can just come into this library browse our topic cards and get started publishing content in just minutes. So for example, let's say we were um, in administrative law and I'm gonna view um, our available topic cards. So we, right now we have um, a little over three, 320 practice area topics, but we're grow growing this on an ongoing basis. We also allow our members to message us and request a topic, and we kind of just keep that on a running running list for everyone. So we are we're dedicated to growing this consistently, um, but this is just where it is at at the moment. But um, this is where you can browse your topic cards. But say you wanted to edit and use this piece of content. So right away, I can see on the left all the ways that this piece of content has already been optimized for me. It's got over five link opportunities, optimized subtitles, it helps build authority and trust. It also gives me organic traffic opportunities. And then on my right is a preview of the content. And then everything that's in blue is what I'm going to be customizing in my next step. So I can take a peek at this, make sure everything looks good, and then choose to use this template. And then as you can see on my end, I've already saved my entries from a previous um, content 
selection. So I don't even need to enter all my information again and again. It remembered my information. I can see that it auto populated for me on the right. And then so basically I'm good to go and I can complete this customization. And then it, we're brought back to that back end where I can make any sort of edits that I'm looking to make to um, enhance this piece of content or maybe add image or video or tables or charts or widgets or whatever I would like to do. If I can't really think of anything at the moment, I have this helpful light bulb in my bottom corner. It's got all of these extra content suggestions, like maybe I wanna customize my types of clients and cases. And then, okay, I'm done with that. That'll check it off for me. Uh, maybe I wanna build my social proof. Sounds good. Customize my call to action. All of these are great suggestions for ways to kind of just take that piece of content a step further. And like I said, if I check them off, it's going to remember my progress so I can save this off as a draft, come back later, and I still know where I'm at with um, my progress. So say I'm happy with this piece of content and I've added everything that I wished to add. Um, if I publish this on the front end, um, then it's going to be ready for me right away on the front end of my website. And here we are. It's got everything formatted for me. I've got my um, my titles and subtitles ready to go, my click to call phone number, my contact form, everything's ready and formatted for me on the front end of that website. And it really only took a maybe a couple minutes. So just wanted to show you all around that just a little bit. And then I'm going to take us back to our slides here. But that's pretty much everything that I do have for you all today. Um, if you do have any questions about having a successful website with Analytics, or you'd like to see a little bit more of an in-depth demo of this technology, these are all the great ways that you can get in touch with us. But um, I will hold on for just a couple moments for any questions. But um, if there are no more questions, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Have a good one.